What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Daily Race. Hey, Pastor Darius here, filling in for Pastor Ryan. This week, Pastor Ryan went to Africa. He's going to go connect with some of our contacts there in Cote d'Ivoire. He's got a couple of his boys with him, Pastor Rusty, Kevin and Darla, some amazing volunteers at our church. Man, they're getting it right now. So as they're heading on over to Africa, ready to do some great work for God, we're right here on the daily race, ready to spend some time with God, to connect with Him, to see what He wants to speak into our life today. So it's Saturday right now. I'm recording this here on Saturday morning for those of you hitting us up live. I know some of you guys are going to catch up to us a little bit later on in the day. But it's Saturday morning, November the 20th right now, and it's time for us to get on up and get it, y'all. It's early, but you know what? It's a good day. So let's go on and get it. Hey, we're in Psalm chapter 40 today as we're kind of walking through the book of Psalms. Psalms are this great, kind of just the hymn book of the Bible, the, the music. Um, we don't know all the lyrics, the, the, we know the lyrics, but we don't know all the tunes or melodies it's played to, but we get a chance to kind of share some of these words that were expressed all throughout Psalm that we're kind of studying right now. So I'm going to hop into chapter 40 right now, and uh, hey, Go ahead and track along and pull out your Bible with me and track along as well if you'd like. But I'm going to be in Psalm chapter 40 today. Check out what it says. I'm going to go down. I'm just going to start in verse 5 as you kind of read a little bit. Verse 5 tells us this. It says, O Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. Now I'm going to stop there for just a minute. I love that idea that you have no equal, God. This is something that maybe you've sung that song, What a Beautiful Name It Is. It says some powerful lyrics in that song, You have no rival, you have no equal. I love songs that just brag about God, talk about how amazing He is. And that's right, can't nobody stand up to our God. He has no rival, He has no equal, He's amazing. And I love the language that it uses here. If it says, like, you know what, there's, um, that, that your plans for us are too numerous to list, it also says, If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to an end of them. They would just go on forever and ever. This language that David uses here is similar to the language David used in Psalm 139, when he's talking about how much God thinks about us, how precious his thoughts are for us, how much God loves us and values us. He talks about, you know, more numerous than the grains on the seashore. That's the way that God loves us. That's the way that he thinks about us. In the same way, his wonderful deeds there's so many of them, they're too numerous to list. The plans he has for us, man, it would never come to an end. God has great things in mind or great things in store for you and for I, and his great glory is gonna be achieved through us if we'll allow him to use us. But look at what it goes on to say, and here's kind of what I'm gonna focus on a little bit today. I love this. Verse six, it says, you take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand. You don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Like, wait a minute, that doesn't, doesn't quite make sense. I mean, this was kind of the way that people related to God back in the day. They would give them these offerings. They would offer sacrifices up to God. If they did something wrong, the way they would repent of those sins, the way they turn back to God, is by offering them a sacrifice. I was like, okay, God, we, we good now, right? I just offered this bull, I offered this ram, I split his, shed his blood. We good, right, God? And that was the way that they related to God. And right here, David is saying, you don't take delight in that. What could he mean by that? Well, look at what he goes on to say. He goes on to say, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. I, I love this right here. I want you to kind of harken back here just a minute for me. Um, he says he takes no delight in these sacrifices or offerings. This kind of takes us back a little bit to when Samuel confronted King Saul. There was a moment where God told King Saul, I'm going to give you favor over your enemies. I want you to go wipe out the Amalekites. They haven't been good to my people, so we're going to take them out. So Saul was given the marching orders to go wipe out the Amalekites. But what Saul did is he did whatever he wanted to do. Saul showed up and he wiped out all the weak things, all the things that were, were of no value, were no good, but Saul kept the best of the sheep and the rams and, and spared some of the best, you know, the king and the best of the people. Saul spared some of these things for themselves. And eventually when Samuel caught up to him, Samuel was like, didn't God say to wipe out everybody and everything? Saul was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. You know, what I'm actually doing is I saved the best of this to offer it to God. I'm going to give God an offering. I'm going to offer the best things to God. Isn't that something that God would want? And, and this is what Saul was just telling Samuel right here. Who knows if this is exactly what he was going to do. 
But Samuel says to Saul, Saul, no. That, that isn't what God desires most of all. What God desires most of all is your obedience. Samuel tells Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. He wants Saul to know something that still God wants us to know to this day. Our obedience is more important than, than our sacrifice or, or bringing these offerings to God or, or coming back to God and apologizing, which is good, and saying sorry and making things right. That's good. But you know what's even better than going back to God and saying sorry and, and, and being forgiven and going back to God over and over again? What's even better than that is actually obeying God in the first place. God desires our obedience even more than that. God wants us to obey him the first time, the right time. If you've got kids, you know what it's like to ask your kids for obedience. Obedience is more important than sacrifice in this case. Obedience is more important than going back and having to say sorry for doing something wrong in the first place. And that's why this next passage makes so much sense when it says, I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written on my heart. That's kind of that ultimate step of obedience right there. You know, one, one step is, hey, stand sorry or asking for forgiveness for things we did wrong. The, the, the next step is kind of like obedience, what God desires our obedience in the first place. But we know what the next step is even better than that. Having joy in our obedience. Having joy in doing what's right. Having joy in doing what God has asked us to do, what God has called us to do. That's what God desires from us. This can kind of be in the same way of like somebody reading their Bible. Somebody could be like, ah, man, I don't really feel like reading my Bible. I'm sorry, God, I didn't read my Bible today. And it could start there. Then it could go to an obedience. Like, okay, God, I'm reading my Bible. I'm doing it. It's a discipline. I'm getting into it. But one day, and what God desires and what I hope for you as well is one day it becomes a joy. You are joyful. You're excited to read God's word. You can't wait to open up your Bible because you know God's going to speak something into your life that you never would have heard otherwise. I love what it says right here, guys. I take joy in doing your will, my God. That's my heart and my desire for you, that you realize that obedience is more important than asking for forgiveness or saying sorry, because that means you're doing something right in the first place. Obedience is more important, but even more important than that, doing God's will with joy, finding joy in obedience, joyfully doing God with God's will. My prayer for you today is that you would find joy in doing God's will. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this day, Lord. What a great opportunity we get to connect with you, to spend time with you, and just to really give us some vision, Lord, to fire us up for the day, what it is you got for us today, God. God, I pray that each and every one of us would, would get to a point of obedience with you, and that would be our top priority, to be obedient to you, and that you would just finally get us to a point as our Holy Spirit gets excited about leaning into you and following you and loving you, that we would have great joy in our obedience, Lord. We'd be excited to do your will because we know that's the best possible path for our life. You've got something amazing planned for us. And if we would joyfully follow you, we'll get a chance to experience you in ways like never before. So God, I pray that each and every one of us would be joyfully obedient to you. And we'd be excited seeing what it looks like to live our lives for you and nobody else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. This is a good Saturday right here. If you are out in the Buckeye community, hey, I'm gonna challenge you. Come on out to the Wishbone Festival today. This is an opportunity we have to go reach our community today to go make a difference. We're putting on a free fall event for those in our community. We've got food boxes to hand out to people who may be in need. People have already registered for those, but we're gonna have extra as well. We're trying to do something special in our community. We're trying to show them the hope and love of Jesus Christ, and this is one of the ways that we're doing that this year. So if you catch this this morning, sometime before, you know, 11 to 3 o'clock range, that's when we're going to be up there at Yonker High School doing this. We'd love for you to come and hit us on up to see what God has going on there. And hey, bring somebody who doesn't know Christ with you. This would be a great way to show them irrational generosity. It's a free event, free food, free games, free fun. We want people to have a good time because it represents Jesus Christ. And ultimately, that's who we're pointing them to. So, hey, y'all, let's go ahead and have a good day today. Go ahead and get it on a Saturday. I hope you have fun being joyful and doing God's will. And, hey, we're going to see you once again 24 hours from now, if we don't see you at the Wishbone Festival, for the next Daily Race. Holla!